and welcome back. Now today we're going to be looking at a discrete component, a little module in fact, that one there behind my finger, in fact it's so small I'm going to have to definitely use my pointer for this because it is tiny and as the title of the video would indicate this is in fact a 3 watt class D amplifier and it is in fact dwarfed here on this little tiny breadboard because it is so absolutely tiny but it does deliver a full 3 watts. I've got it connected up to a signal generator and um, I'm delivering, let me have a look over there, what does it say? Something like um, half a volt going in and that's plenty loud enough because the output is indeed going into a 3 watt speaker so that should be okay and it's um, a 4 ohm which is ideal for this amplifier. Now as you can see this, this speaker is quite chunky. Um, I've used it before in demos. Um, you can get these very cheaply on Banggood and AliExpress and all those other places, eBay and whatnot. Um, quite a different story from this little one we did a while ago in the video. Yeah, that's right, it was that video on screen now about the recording module, the um, ISD1820. Nice little module, but the speaker that came with it, which is this tiny little thing, oh, you can't actually see what uh, wattage it is on the back there, um, it was a little bit disappointing, the volume. It got better if you put this in a tube or mounted it in a component box, you know, your your final um, box that you're going to put it in, it will always sound a lot, lot better, louder, clearer once it's mounted so that the the waves from behind the speaker can't cancel out the waves from the front. However, this speaker is a whole different kettle of fish. It's a much better speaker in itself. Um, it's, it's obviously a lot chunkier. It's three watts, got a big magnet on it and um, it's it's nice although the downside of course is that you've got to find a box big enough to put in not that it's massive you can see just from my hands there it's not massive but it is an awful lot bigger than that so i guess it depends on what you want out of your project if you just want a few beeps and burps and things then maybe that little one is more than adequate in fact you might argue that um, a sounder a buzzer you know would be more than enough pizza type thing um, but remember we use this one here um, for a voice and we'll demo this in a minute again via this new amplifier and uh, it was okay as I said but coming out through here it's well it should be quite a difference uh, we'll see about that so what I've got it connected up to almost at the moment is a signal generator running at either around about a kilohertz I'll have a look and it's too far away from a C as you can see I've got my new Harry Potter glasses on because uh, with the advancing years, it's getting more and more difficult to focus on my screen. It's the age, you see. It's the age. I can't do it anymore. So these glasses allow me to see much, much closer to the screen and so forth. But unfortunately, my, my signal generator is, is just too far the other side over there somewhere. And um, I can't see the actual frequency. I'll tell you what it is when we do it. Okay, so now I've got to unstick this because it's held in place by a blue sack at the moment. I'm going to just connect this up. And I'll be back in just a jiffy. Right, I'm just about to connect up the uh, power supply, 5 volts, to uh, the, the plus on here. It's a little bit hacky doing it this way, but you know. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds very loud to me, and it's really, really annoying. It's um, 2.6 kilohertz. I'm going to have to turn it off. It's 2.6 kilohertz, which, funnily enough, is what the ear can really hear nicely. It's about the same pitch as... Um, Screaming kids, actually. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, don't talk to me about screaming kids on that flight from America. No. Um, 2.6 kilohertz, really penetrating. You don't need a lot of power, actually, to make 2.6 kilohertz heard. But that was just a demo that, in fact, it's all working. It's coming out of the speaker fine, and it was loud, and it was annoyingly loud. The input voltage, incidentally, was 0.6 volts um, that I'm dragging into it. But, um, okay. So we have a signal generator delivering 2.6 kilohertz into it, so what? Um, I can adjust the frequency a little bit, just to give you an idea. Um, I'll do that, or I'll, do, I'll take myself off so I can lean over and do that. So I'm going to connect up again. And now if I change the frequency... Now you'll hear now, for example, it sounds a lot lower in volume, because we're now generating... That's about 100 hertz, it says. And so it goes up. Okay, I think we've proven it. Stop. I think we can stop that. Right, we've proven, beyond all reasonable doubt, that the amplifier works. And we'll talk about what Class D means in just a while. 
What I'd like to do though is give this a more a real world feeling. You go, okay, so we have an amplifier, it works. How does it improve on something like this little one at the back? Well, not that we have the speaker as well, but you know the output from here. Let's see um, how that works. So take me a minute or so just to connect up, and uh, I'll be right back. Right, it's all connected up. Um, five volt power. I've got the current limited limited to about three hundred milliamps, I believe. Let me just let me just double check that. Uh, oh no, five hundred. Good lord! It does take quite a bit of power at full volume. Um, let's just press the button on the output module. If you want to know more about this recording module by the way um, have a look at the video there it is on screen now and we go through this in the nth degree as i say though it's a little bit disappointing with the volume but now listen to this um i will i will actually try and make a tube out of my hands just to sort of make sure the microphone picks it up but listen to this this is a demonstration of the oe3pw class d amplifier now, for all the um, hi-fi purists out there, yes, of course there was distortion on it. And in fact, the data sheet does say that at full volume, you get about 10% distortion. However, in the sort of um, applications that an Arduino might be used for, 10% distortion is neither here nor there. Better to hear it with a bit of distortion than have it too quiet and not. That said, if you bring it down to about uh, two and a half watts compared to the three, um, you only get one percent distortion. So if I'd if I'd put a variable resistor in here, for example, as a volume control or a preset or something, then I suspect it would have sounded a little bit better. However, that is that is not bad. I mean, considering I've just I've just shouted something into that microphone, uh, and now I'm playing it back again. This is a demonstration of the OE3PW Class D amplifier. Now, sitting here, I would say that's probably the equivalent to what I can hear my own voice at recording this video. So that's that's pretty good. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. In fact, I'm more than pleased. I'd say I'm quite impressed. I know it doesn't take much, does it? Um, so, yes, as a little tiny amplifier, that is good. Now, before we go into um, current consumption, class D amplifiers and what that all means, let's have a look where I got this from, um, which... Uh, I, unusually, unusually, I did buy it from a British supplier on eBay. At least I think they're British. Uh, let's have a look. What does it say here? Uh, yeah, in Cheshire. There we are. So it was um, a UK supplier. Um, I can't. I think I read about this amplifier somewhere, or maybe it just caught my eye as I was browsing eBay, or perhaps they even sent me a suggestion. I can't remember now. It was long before my holiday, um, and I had this almost connected up at the time. So I can't remember why I bought this, but I thought for one ninety nine, it's worth investigating and sharing with you people. However, one ninety nine, although cheap as chips, really. You can get it a lot cheaper, of course you can, if you get it from the Far East. Uh, let's have a look at this one. This is, who's this? This is AliExpress, right? Now, look at this one here. You get 10 pieces, exactly the same item, 10 pieces for £3.63. Not that you're going to build 10 amplifiers necessarily, but that would be 36 pence each, wouldn't it? Um, here, 65 pence per item, right? So my 199 suddenly starts looking like quite an expensive buy, doesn't it? But uh, I was happy with it, 199 it would do for a project, but 65p would be better. And in fact, at this sort of price, I mean £3.63 for 10 I reckon it's almost worth buying 10 and uh, just keep them in, in your little module cupboard, you know, your drawer or something, and using them as and when, because that really is cheap. Now, let's talk about um, what it means by Class D amplifier. In fact, what is Class A, A plus B, and so on, because obviously it's something this small... And it is tiny. Look, if I just bring this up here, you can see. I mean, yes, the actual unit which comes on this little little um, header. I've, I've soldered it onto this bent header actually, so I can just plug it into my my board here. But as you can see, the chip itself is tiny, and the board itself that it's mounted on is equally small. Um, oh yes, and there's one other thing we must talk about before we talk about class D's, is that the current consumption, as noted by the eBay seller that. Um, I bought it from. Let's just go back to the browser window. There we are. Now, if we scroll down, because this this worried me for a little bit, but I thought, no, surely that can't be right. So here's here's some of the um, uh, specifications for it. And it says, yeah, anything between 2.5 and 5. That's not strictly true. The the data sheet, as we'll see in a minute, says anything from uh, 3 to 5.5. So if you've got a 3.3 .3 volt um, chip, Arduino chip or whatever. 
ESP8266, it will work on 3.3, although you do get a 5 volt output pin on those as well, almost definitely. So, you know, we're not worrying about the power. 3 watts into 4 amp, yes, blah, blah, blah. Quiescent current, 28 milliamps at 5 volt. Now, that worried me. I thought, oh, that sort of precludes it then for sort of battery use, really, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. And I'll show you why. Let's leap over to the uh, data sheet. Here we are. Now, first of all, um, I'll put all this incidentally into my GitHub and put a link on the uh, video below this. All right, so you'll see all this information. Um, if we scroll down a bit, now it's it's under specifications somewhere. So let bear with me. These are the maximum uh, values. So here, here we have now quiescent current. This is the one we're just talking about. It says here no load 5.5, or we're running at five volts. Uh, typical 3.8 milliamps and in fact looking over at my um, power supply it says one milliamp now okay i'm not um i'm not looking at an ultra accurate power well the power supply is accurate but it's only got three digits so it says one milliamp okay fine now that's not bad in quiescent mode but it's not brilliant however if on one of these pins go back to the workbench one of these pins is known as a, well, it's, it's marked on here as a chip select. You can probably just see it in between those wires, like the very first pin, CS, chip select, which on the uh, data sheet is called something else. I think it's called an enable pin. So this pin here, pin one uh, on both formats, is known as the shutdown terminal active low. So shutdown pin, basically. So look what happens. If we um, if we play this again, and uh, k bring pin one down to ground via this little switch, it's just connected to this blue wire, which is going to the negative. It will cut it down immediately. Now, if you can still hear that, that's the original speaker now playing. But that's that's down, that's off. And if I'm looking over at my power supply, and it says zero current, nothing's flowing at all. And so that means your Arduino or whatever it is can bring this to life when it's got something to output, something to say or whatever. So yes, this could be um, useful for battery purposes because what's the current when it's in switch off mode? Let's have a look again. So here we are, shut down current, right? So when that pins one is down to ground, it says typically 0.1 microamps. Now this is great, even if it went up to 2 microamps. If you've been following my series on the ESP8266 and the Arduino low power deep sleep things, that sort of value is more than acceptable for battery use, I would say, in my humble opinion. You of course may have a different opinion, in which case please write, um, write a comment below this video if you don't think that's good, but I think that's absolutely brilliant. So that means basically you can connect all this up as a circuit, bring that chip one to your Arduino, or whatever chip you're using, uh, make it high so that um, it, it will run. And then when you don't want it to output anymore, bring that pin down to zero or ground and it will switch that amplifier off to all extents and purposes. I mean, 0.1 microamps is your battery leaks more current than that, I would think. So that is excellent. Right. Time to talk about different classes of amplifiers and why we can get three watts out of this tiny little unit and no heatsink. You would think that, hang on, if this is dumping close to 500 milliamps or thereabouts into that speaker, and I had to put my power supply up to 500 milliamps, otherwise it just kept um, current limiting, how does it do it without blowing up? Hmm, good question. Right, let's talk about classes of amplifier and why this one works so well, because this does deliver three watts into that speaker and no heatsink and it all runs perfectly great. Now historically class A amplifiers like um, valve amplifiers for example and early transistor amplifiers they were conducting all the time so forget about battery running or anything like that they would run it flat pretty quick. The output transistors were cons constantly running and then outputting a variation you know a sine wave um, on top of that uh, into the loudspeaker and that's what you heard but it was pretty inefficient. Now class B um, amplifiers had two 
complementary output transistors. So one transistor amplified the positive cycle of your sine wave and one the negative cycle. So that only one transistor was on at any one time. And that was better, um, but it, it was subject to a bit of crossover distortion. So there was often an AB type amplifier which had a bit of A characteristics and a bit of B to stop the crossover distortion and, and that went on for quite a long time. Indeed when I was starting out electronics as a as a young child, stop the sniggering at the back there, back in the 70s um, we used AB almost exclusively as far as I can remember, it was a long time ago. All right not that long ago, stop going on. Um, now however though um, Okay, there are other classes as well, C and whatnot, and G and H and all the rest of it. But D, um, then they're often referred to as digital amplifiers, which is it's, it's not really true, although the efficiency of the amplifier is, well, upwards of 90%, because they're using MOSFETs. And if you know anything about the MOSFETs we might use in an Arduino circuit, where you can bias the MOSFET gate at 5 volts, the resistance between the drain and the source drops to almost zero. You just, sometimes it's like 0 0.01 ohms, which is why we use them for things like pulse width modulation and all that, because we can get the full voltage swing on the output. Ditto then for this amplifier here. Because it's a class D, um, the output swing is, is almost entirely the full voltage that you're putting in. Well, to all intents and purposes, it is the full voltage. So these days you'll find um, all the vo low voltage amplifiers and indeed hi-fi ones as well. Class D like in cars for example, I'm sure you've all heard cars going along with the windows down and, and the bass coming out of that car would, is enough to shatter windows. Well that's because it's running a class D amplifier on 12 volts and that can deliver you know 100 plus watts. Um, ditto um, DJ type amplifiers almost definitely class D these days because you can really dump that current into a speaker very very efficiently that's the whole point if you try to run say you know a 500 watt amplifier as a class A well it'd be all right you could use it as a home heating device as well as a, as a, as a stove or an oven because it would be so hot it'd be ridiculous so class D I'll try and find a few more links actually sort of beginner links the difference between the classes um, because these days it all sort of blends into one another a little bit but class d known as digital amplifiers not strictly true but it's it's good enough for this i think in fact if we go back to the um the ebay thing i think this said um class d didn't it let's have a look class d digital oh no it didn't actually oh it did there it is look digital power amplifier because well it, it sounds good doesn't it if you put the word digital in must be modern must be good well in this case it is modern and it is good so okay good luck sir right that's that's that so the um i'll put the the specs for this the data sheet in the github and under the video description as normal um is it good for battery yes it is because you can turn it on and off by applying a low voltage or ground to that pin one does it deliver three watts yes it does Distortion, well, as we've said, 10% at the full uh, 3 watts, but but only 1% at 2.5 watts, and, well, so much better than this. In fact, if I very quickly run the two side by side, I won't put my hands over it like this to sort of amplify the sound particularly. What I'll do is disconnect um, this one here, just temporarily, so we only run this little speech module on this speaker here, so I disconnect this one here. Right, so that one's disconnected, and if I now press play, now I can see my microphone was picking that up because it's a pretty good microphone. But I bet I'm going to have to do some post videoing um, enhancements to that because I don't think you're going to hear it. Okay, so let's put this back in and have another lesson. <laughs> of the OE3PW Class D amplifier. Now that's without putting any kind of sort of tube arrangement like my hand around it and certainly not mounting it in an enclosure. Absolutely brilliant. Delivers that full full three watts into there. Excellent price. Great um, thing to add in the project if you want a bit of volume. I mean for 199 on the UK price and what was it? 65 
pence or something from AliExpress or or uh, wherever it was in the Far East. It's got to be something to consider for your um, toolbox, isn't it, really? And uh, any of the links below this video, they're not, I'm not associated with any of those. These aren't affiliate links. I don't get anything for it. So this is just something I thought I'd bring to your attention as being, well, one of those fantastic things that the Far Eastern markets have developed and all the better for us, really. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Leave comments below the video again and see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.